Luca. Luca. <laughs> Guys, hold on one second. Luca is way too busy just sleeping on Alan's foot. Give me one second. For like two seconds, okay? People need to see your cute face. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Ashley. This is my little Luca bear. Say hi, Luca. Hi guys, hi guys. This is my little professional teddy bear. <gasps> Look at his eyes, his hair is getting in his eyes. <laughs> this is his 12 week pup date and I'm so excited to share with you the tips and the tricks and everything we have learned along the way in this journey to so hopefully save you some time energy and those dollar dollar bills. <laughs> oh my gosh, boy has the time flown. We have had Luca for three weeks, but he is 12 weeks old and we got him at nine weeks and I'm gonna show you some pictures that his breeder sent to us. Look at little baby Luca as a little baby with all of his sisters. Oh my God, he is just so adorable. I'm gonna go over all the different topics of all the things that we have learned in our journey with Luca. Those topics include eating, sleeping, potty training, his first vet visit, walks, and the favorite things and the best parts about having a little mini golden doodle. I'm gonna put the timestamps below if you just wanna skip ahead to one of your favorite sections or a section that you're curious about. I have absolutely adored and loved watching these videos as I was in the process of getting a mini golden doodle. So I really appreciate it and we just wanna share our perspective of, of what's worked for us, what hasn't worked. And I'll be sharing some of the products that we also found really helpful um, in the links below. So if you're like, man, and I wanna try one of those, uh, definitely be sure to check that out too. Okay, so first off, let's talk about Luca's personality. This dog is just the funniest little baby. He cracks me up, and I hope this is common among mini golden doodles. First off, Alan likes to say if dogs had a love language, Luca's would be physical touch because he always has to be touching one of us. I've never seen that in a dog before. My little wiener dogs growing up were just not like that at all, and Luca always has to either be on our feet or touching our bodies or crawled up on our face or whatever it is, but I absolutely adore that and I love that. It also makes sleeping a little bit difficult, but we're gonna get to that later. He's just so funny. He also just hides under our couch and will just like sprint and run out and it is just so adorable. And the cutest thing, I'm gonna be sad when the day comes where he can't fit under our couch anymore. He also, just that mix between poodle and golden retriever. So he's an F2B mini golden doodle. And because he is a mini golden doodle, he is hypoallergenic, which is so amazing because so many people in my family um, are allergic to dogs. So that was really important to us. And I kind of am allergic to animals too. I just, it's weird, it comes and goes. So that's really amazing. Luca is so good with people. We took him to the cutest thing alive, it was like, a Hallmark movie, it was called The Circleville Pumpkin Show, and he did such a great job. One, he was wearing the cutest little sweater, but also he did such a good job with all these people coming up to him and all these kids coming up to him. He is so good with Alan's little niece, and he's just fabulous. So if you have kids and you're interested in a mini golden doodle, highly, highly suggest it. He is so loving and so cuddly and I just adore him. My trainer at the gym was like, I can tell you're obsessed with your dog. I'm like, I am, is that normal? Because I don't really care because I'm definitely obsessed with Luca. The way Luca like sleeps and rests just in the middle of the day, literally looks like a bunny. It's like with all of his, it's just like on his back, with all his paws out and just looking crazy. And it just makes me laugh every time. I've just never seen a dog be more human like the Luca is. He's just so cute and I, I'm i obsessed with him. I look at him and I also just can't believe that he's our dog. So that is just a little bit about his personality. Okay, let's talk eating. So I found through my research that it's really important to keep your dog on the same food that the breeder was, at least in the beginning. And our breeder was giving them Nutrisource, which is a dry kibble, and sometimes mixing it with a little bit of wet food because Luca is the smallest of the litter and he just wouldn't eat as much. And he'd be kind of like the last one to eat because he just wasn't, you know, running towards the food like all the other little puppies were. So we stuck with Nutrisource and that is what Luca eats in the 
beginning, we had to mix it with wet food and we would also literally treat Luca like a baby and we would coax him with a spoon and kind of coax him towards his food because he wasn't eating. But I think after like one or two days, he started eating really, really well. And something that Alan picked up really quickly was putting a little bit of water in his dry food and he just loves it. We don't even need to give him wet food anymore. So our wet food kind of stock is definitely more for like little special occasions, so to speak. Um, but he will just gobble up all of his food as long as there's a little bit of water in it. So that is amazing and we're so happy about that. I'm sure there's a ton of other different food options that you can choose. The vet I spoke with that was Luca's original vet in Cleveland said, definitely go with the brands that are the most well known. Your pedigree, your ions, because that formula is the most tested. So something to keep in mind, this is a journey for everyone. Some people really like local brands and more organic and things like that. For now, we're sticking with Nutrisource because he seems to do really well on it and he seems to be a thriving little baby. Something that Luca also really loves when it comes to eating and kind of making it into a game is perfect if you don't have a lot of time to just sit there with your dog and watch him eat and you want him to be distracted. This is kind of one of those mind memory games and you put the food inside and they have to move it around and he'll be distracted for like a good 15 minutes but it makes eating so much fun. And oh, oh see, he's already, oh baby. He's popping up, he's like, he's like, mom, you got some food for me? Oh, not yet, sweetheart, not yet. Stay with me in this video though. Dogs will love it and I'm gonna go ahead and link that below in the description too. Oh, hi Alan. Hi. Hi baby. How's it going? Good, how are you? I'm good. Alan is over here because he wants to talk sleeping because this has been a journey, right Alan? It's been interesting, but there's, you know, it's trial and error and we got some, uh, some helpful hints from family. So um, let's start off from the beginning. So in the beginning, what we did was we put we have a crate for Luca and we put it right next to our bed and we would put Luca in the crate and then we would go to sleep and then of course Luca is whining every you know couple hours for us to take him out which of course we did but then when we put him back in the crate he kept whining for so long and we were bad parents and instead of leaving him in his crate I took him out of his crate I put him on our bed and I loved every second of it he's surprisingly good sleeper if we just put him next to us so he yeah. knocked right out slept the whole rest of the night through i swear he's hustling us because if, if he is right next to us he'll just be like <sighs> for like eight hours yeah it's mm. amazing but we can't get used to that because Alan obviously doesn't necessarily want him in our bed the entire time so yeah, uh, so we switched it up I have family who have done rescues and trainings and stuff like that, and they actually recommended not even having him in our room. So we have a guest bedroom in our apartment, and we put him, um, slash your office, and we put him over there, and we're able to close the door and turn out the lights, and honestly, after a couple of days, he would whine for maybe 10 minutes. Um, and after a couple of days, he's pretty much over it. He he knows that once it's that time, it's dark, it's time to go to bed, he does. And his sister suggested a sound machine. So got a cheap sound machine on Amazon. I'll link it in the description below for you. So we highly suggest if you are interested in crate training, put put the dog in another room because if you put them in your bedroom, they're gonna whine all night long and they it's gonna keep you there. up. Yeah, they and can they sense just, you're there. They be with you. And yeah, they want to be with you, and you're going to want to be with them too. So put the crate in the other room, suck it up, because you're going to hear them whining every few hours, but it's going to be for their own good, and, and we want Luca to be nice and strong, so when we are out of town and he does have to stay with family or friends or, you know, or, God, I don't want to board him, but if we ever have to, don't, don't even talk to me about that. That <laughs> needs to be, like, top of the line, like Harvard of boarding. Um... <laughs> Um, then um, then he'll be strong and he'll be used to his little crate training. So that's what we've learned so far when it comes to sleeping. Also, this is something that I have seen suggested on YouTube, which is a calming snuggle puppy for your pet. So I got this for Luca. There's basically a little heartbeat that beats 
and you could put this in your crate for your dog to feel like he's kind of like part of the pack. I actually, fun fact, got this for my mom who had Alzheimer's and she loved that calming kind of just, it feels like an animal, even if it's not. We haven't used this yet because Luca seems to be doing pretty well, but I'm gonna keep this on the back burner just in case he does need a little calming pet because I love it, my mom loved it, and I'm sure Luca would too, but we're trying to make him strong without it. I'm gonna also link that in the description below. All right guys, it's time to talk your favorite thing that might be keeping you from actually getting a puppy, and that is potty training. Potty training with Luca has not been too terrible. We have been really trying to be intentional and diligent about this, and that is basically what our vet said, which is anytime your dog has a transition throughout the day, they need to go out. So if he eats right away, he needs to go out. If he wakes up in the morning, needs to go out. Any sort of moment that he walks away from doing what he was doing, he needs to go out. For Luca, when he does try to sneak in an accident, he goes somewhere where we <laughs> won't see him, of course, he's such a smart dog. He will either go under the table, under our big coffee table, or like behind our blinds. That little, we call him a little terror when he does that. We call him monster and little terror. But for the most part, he really doesn't have many accidents. And what we are trying to train Luca on is bell training. And some of you have actually asked about this in my previous videos. Bell training is something that my family members have done and they have done it so successfully and that is keeping bells at the front of your doors and having your dog hit the bells when they need to go out. Eventually, the goal is for them to hit the bells on their own and then they'll go out. So we will literally take Luca's paws and hit, hit the, the bells bell. and ready, then he'll Luca? go out. Hit but sometimes he will hit the bells without us and it's the cutest thing, right Alan? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah. We love, love, love when Luca does this. He has a couple different places that he goes potty. We try not to use the bells for anything else because you do not want your dog hitting the bells just to like mess around outside or to go on a walk. No, bells are specifically for potty time and potty time only. But our vet told us that for every month that your dog is alive, they need, they get an extra hour or so that their bladder can really withstand the water in them, right? So if Luca is three months old now, he should be able to last, you know, so to speak, for about three hours without having to go outside. And when it comes to going to bed, Alan will take him out between 10 and 11 a.m. I'll take him out around 1.30 a.m. And, you know, they might, Alan might take him out again around four or five, and then we'll take him out again at eight. So it really is going to feel like you have a child. But believe me, if you love the little mini golden doodle you picked, it will be worth it. And it really has not been that bad. I highly suggest a couple things. When he's going outside just for potty, we just use his simple collar. It's much faster, especially when we're like trying to get outside really quickly. Of course, his leash, and then 1000% if you own a dog or puppy, please get these poo bags. We got a whole bunch of them for like 13 bucks. It was like 600 bags on Amazon. You keep it right on your leash and then you will be the best dog owner in your neighborhood and actually pick up his stuff. Can you feel the tension in my voice? All right guys, it's time to talk going on walks. And what we've realized is that you just wanna start small. You know, your puppy is, in a whole new environment and they might not be the best walker. They might be very sporadic, in and out. Sometimes they go on a, a, the best walk ever. Sometimes they're running and sprinting and you're like, this is the life. And sometimes they don't wanna walk at all. And that's definitely Luca's experience. We've realized that he really likes going on family walks. So if me and Alan go with him, he's like the best walker ever. But we started small. We go in a neighborhood where there's not a lot of traffic at all. We go down one little street and then we kept adding on. And now he's becoming a very good walker, but he is a silly little goose and he tries to act like he's in control. And Luca, you are not in control, you hear me? Mm, like you are, he's so cute. Luca's first vet visit was so cute and he was so scared to go inside. Oh my gosh, he's shivering and his claws are like, <laughs> but then he did and he was amazing and our vets were incredible and if you ask for it they'll give you a little printout of all the different shots you know he did his oral 
Sportatella. He did his flu shot, his lepto for vaccine, one of two. It says all the different ones that he will need next time. And I asked them to print out all the ones that he'll need next time. And then we set our next appointment. We also weighed Luca. I think Ellen was a little sad, I'm not gonna lie, because Luca is. Okay, baby, we're gonna weigh you. Ready, it's a big day. Five pounds. Wow! Yeah! Five pounds. And he's, he's our cute little rent. And we adore him. And he will grow, but he will grow at his own little pace. And he did really well, right, Alan? Yes, he did great. He did so great. All right, guys, this is the moment Luca has been waiting for. You know what it is, baby? Oh, yeah. It's your toys and your favorite things. Don't go crazy, Luca. We have baskets of Luca's toys and he likes to just dump them out and bring out all his toys everywhere and now he's gonna go crazy, are you ready? He really likes these squeaky toys, like this one. Ready? Luca, you hear that? You hear that, baby? Go, baby, go! Oh my gosh, of course, like now that we're on camera, he doesn't go at all. All right, that was very anticlimactic, Luca. Literally bring out all these toys. I like the crunchy ones and also the ones um, that make that squeak. These balls are great. They fit in Luca's mouth and he's actually so good at playing fetch. If we throw something, he'll bring it back. He typically just brings it to his little bed, but he does bring it back. And we have a little Kong. Instead of putting peanut butter in it, we just put some treats in it. And it is so hard for him to get these. It's hard for me to get the treats out. But um, this will keep Luca really busy for a long time. So I highly suggest a Kong type of thing. These little guys. <laughs> I'm getting so excited. These little guys are perfect for teething, which obviously Luca is a puppy. He is teething right now. Highly suggest getting some of these. They come in a little box like this and they come on Amazon too, and they're just so good for his teeth, and they just make him feel really good. This is a new little favorite of Luca's. I just got it for him today. It is so hard to not keep buying little things for your dog, especially when he is as cute as Luca. But this is one of those hide and seek things, and they are so fun. This is like a little squirrel thing with a little, I don't even know what this is called, but it is so cute. And Luca seems to love it. And I got this from Marshalls for $6.99. Marshalls, I just discovered their pet section and I'm gonna make probably a whole video on this because their pet section is incredible. You like this, Luca? You like it, baby? You wanna come make another guest appearance? No? Okay. All right, guys, grand finale when it comes to Luca's favorite things. He's about to go mad. I could not suggest this more, especially if you're watching a show or you're relaxing and you don't wanna be running around with your dog. This is your chill time. This little guy, which Luca's already destroying, is Luca's by far favorite toy. Wanna to know why? Luca! Because the minute he does this, Luca is so obsessed with his elk antlers and his yak chew, and just seems to be really good for him, especially in the teething phase. Yak chews are just simply um, cow's milk, yak's milk, lime, and salt. So it's a very natural thing. It'll keep them busy for hours and hours and hours, um, and he absolutely loves them. The elk antlers themselves, the ones we get are, are from a distributor that gets them naturally shed, so there's no farming or anything like that. Mm -hmm. oh, so yeah. these are from Alan's sister's company that is so incredible, highly recommended. Just go to devildogpetco.com and I'm gonna put that in the link below too. Family meeting guys, family meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I wanna share the best part of having Luca and that He's our little baby. The best part is him. The best part is his personality. And he's just so loving and kind and silly and funny. And this must be how parents feel because it's unconditional love, baby. Like I can't get enough of him. I always want him around. I always want him sitting on Zoom meetings with me. I always want to be touching him. I'm obsessed. <laughs> he's probably so annoyed with me. What's your favorite part of Luca? 
Oh, I mean, I just, I love dogs in general. So, I mean, he is very cuddly and he keeps my feet warm. <laughs> <laughs> he, 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 Who needs slippers when you have Luca? <laughs> right? He, uh, if I'm sitting on the couch, you know, watching TV, playing games, whatever, he, and he, when he's ready to chill, he will literally lay across my feet. Mm. So it's pretty cute. He Can't is the absolute best. So this has been our little 12 week pup date with Luca. If you've enjoyed this series on our little mini golden doodle, definitely give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below. Let me know what other information we can help you with. And thank you guys so much. Of course, subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next time. Bye guys. Bye. Bye. Right, Luca? He's like, I'm done. Got my like yak. I got my yak too. I'm good to go. <laughs>